Cornell gave the Iron Law of Bureaucracy, which states that in any bureaucratic organization, there will be two kinds of people. Those who work to further the actual goals of the organization and those who work for the organization itself. Examples in education would be teachers who work and sacrifice to teach children versus union representatives who work to protect any teacher, including the most incompetent. The Iron Law states that in all cases, the second type of person will always gain control of the organization and will always write the rules under which the organization functions. So if we were to believe this law, then we put a big question mark over various leaders across the globe. Not only international or national leaders, it also makes you question the entire idea of bureaucracy functioning in your company or institution. To what extent is this law true? Let's find out. More generic form of this would be to state that in any system, those who are willing to go furthest in protecting their position will usually have the upper hand. Example, the company owner remains a company owner only as long as they're willing to go sufficiently far to keep the company profitable, those who don't go bankrupt and lose their position. It also implies that leaders of bureaucratic organizations will seek to maximize the power and influence of the organization at the expense of its stated goals. Even though the law relates to our everyday life and people believe it to be true, it has faced a lot of criticism. Critics argue that the law is untrue by giving examples like the Finnish school systems. They are among the best in the world. Finnish teachers are trained at the best universities. Once they take up a teaching position, they are given great authority and control of their classrooms. They are highly respected and well compensated. And last but not least, they are members of a powerful teachers' union. It's also important to clarify the point that the least bureaucratic and more democratic forms of labor organizing were the most viciously attacked and most thoroughly eliminated. Only more bureaucratic forms of labor organizing were able to survive the onslaught of the powerfully entrenched bureaucracy of corporatism with its alliance of government, corporations, lobbyists, think tanks, and big biz media. That doesn't necessarily disprove this law of bureaucracy, but it does prove that some of the evidence he uses doesn't support his argument. And that makes one doubt that, as presented, it is an iron law. No organization, not even a union, is inevitably bureaucratic. Nor is there always, maybe not even usually, a distinction between those dedicated to the goals of the organization and those dedicated to the organization itself. It depends on what kind of organization, such as whether it is authoritarian and hierarchical or democratic and egalitarian. This law leaves out many details. It's a generalization that, however applicable in some cases, has many exceptions. More problematic is its fatalism, is that the bureaucrats can be nothing but bad and they will always win. Usefulness of this generalization is still debated. The law may seem true to people working in a highly bureaucratic corporate or public organization, but on the other hand, some may think that this is not true who work in a more egalitarian form. It depends on the type of organization that you're working for. Another factor which may affect our belief in this law is our perception. Sometimes we feel like we worked so hard and yet someone else got the promotion. We simply can't accept the fact that our work might not be as good, so we start looking for excuses. No matter how controversial this law may be, it definitely makes us question those in power and knocks on our consciousness about the power politics happening around us. That was all for this video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel Explified.